Their whole problem, basically, is the fact that they believe that if they don't take care of themselves, whatever it takes, then they're not going to make it. And so this person has built his life around developing a story that will get you to respond to his bad situation. And because of that, he is trying to do it in his own strength. I told him right out in the front room, I said, you know what? I said, we're Christians. We will help you. You know, we will either help you if we can, or if we can't, we can't. But if we can, we will, because we're Christian. I said, when you come in with your stories, I said, the best thing you can do is just shut up. Because everybody in this room, and I told him in this building at this point, I said, we all know a con. We all know you're conning. We know what you're saying. We know the truth behind it. We, we, you're not fooling anybody. If you're fooling anybody, you're only fooling yourself. Because we're not fooled. And yet we still help you because we love you. And he, he couldn't get a hold of that. He could only get a hold of the fact that if I don't get something from them, I'm not going to make it. In other words, his, see, this is what I'm talking about as far as us being Christians. We recognize our weakness. The hardest person to reach is a person who will not admit weakness. Isn't that right? Who will not admit I need Christ. You can't reach them. All you can reach is a, people like that. They're so hard because they think I've got to do this all on my own. In other words, my strength is my security. I, 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 my strength is what I is how I'm going to get ahead. But the, with the Christian, it's just the opposite. The heart of the Christian is I can't do this on my own. I can't do this by myself. And by that, we lay down our shield and we surrender to Jesus. And we say, you in me, when you're in me, I'm strong. You're out, I'm weak. And he says, yeah, and in your weakness, I'm made strong. Why? In other words, when you recognize your weakness, you can partake of my strength. But if you will not admit your weakness, you will never pick up his strength. And you know, Jesus himself said, if you, he didn't say, listen, I'm going to give you this good life. And when I do, you're going to want to lay down that old life. He never said that. He said, you lay down your old life, and I will give you a new life. Isn't that right? You have to admit the weakness before you can pick up the strength. The problem is, humans don't want to do that. You know, it's like I told you before, when I talk about praying in tongues, you've got to pray in tongues loud. Why? Because you don't want to. Well, why do I have to just because I don't want to? Because that don't want to is the human part of you that we're trying to kill. And so you have to do that part. And you say, why? It's because you have to learn to lay down, to become weak. You know, <laughs> I'm, I get letters sometimes from people that don't like some of the analogies I use. But as long as you get a hold of the idea behind them, I really don't care what people write. Okay? One lady wrote me, and I, told, I, I even put on the website, I said, if you don't agree with this, please don't waste your time writing me. Just go to the, some of these other websites that will be glad to cater to you. And she wrote me. And I answered her, and then at the bottom I said, and you didn't read, you did not obey my website, because I told you not to write me, but you did anyway. And I answered her, and I hadn't heard from her since, so I don't know if she agreed or just <laughs> didn't agree, absolutely. But <clears throat> remember, most of you, are, you know, would remember the old Star Wars, I almost said trilogy, but now it's whatever, the nine of them all together, so it's quite a few. But remember whenever Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi finally face down to fight? And remember when he raises up, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi raises up the sword, the lightsaber? <clears throat> and come on, anybody should see that that was, <clears throat> it was actually called attack by drawing. Okay? In other words, you're making an opening, knowing what your opponent's going to do, he's going to go for the cut. Well, <clears throat> normally you would block it, but the whole idea behind Obi-Wan Kenobi is what he told him was, if you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Why? And because he realized, and I, I'm spiritualizing this for the sake of Christianity for a moment. I'm not saying this was in Lucas's mind or anything else. Okay, I'm just using the analogy a little bit. With Christians, 
if we put ourselves in Obi-Wan Kenobi's position and we raise up, that is a position of weakness because we're opening, we're becoming vulnerable. Now, Obi-Wan recognized that whenever he got cut down, he would become stronger because in their mind, he would become one with the Force. Well, that's what we're all striving for. Isn't that it? But it only comes through surrender. It doesn't come... See, in Christianity, especially today, we have this idea of Christianity that... I'll give you an example. Well, <laughs> i tell you, I was born a couple hundred years too late, I think, sometimes. <clears throat> if today's Christianity would be like a squire, young knight, walking into a, 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 a castle, and he comes to the front door, and the first thing they do is you have the quartermaster looking at this young guy, going, okay, yeah, he's about this tall, he's about, okay, I know, yeah, okay, and he goes back, and he pulls out, and he goes, okay, he's okay, he got some good arms on him, he could probably handle a sword about this weight, and, and, and that armor, just say, he, need, he doesn't need all the, he just needs the uh, chain mail, we'll get that, and, and this quartermaster is seeing this person and thinking, okay, this is what he needs to put on him so that he can become this great knight. And that's what most <coughs> churches do. <coughs> most churches take people and keep adding to them armor, or adding this, adding that, and building them up. And they keep adding a little bit here and a little bit there. And, oh, your armor's a little bit off balance, so we'll put a little more over here. And they keep trying to add stuff to you when in, they've not dealt with the inside. All they've done is given you an armor <clears throat> that, like David would have said, this isn't proven. It's not my armor. This is your armor. <clears throat> when Christianity isn't that at all. Christianity is Obi-Wan Kenobi. He comes in, and the first thing we say is, do you want to be one with God? Yeah, okay, then surrender. Raise your hands up, get cut down, die, and become one. That's it. Instead of, well, no, but, you know, I've got to get stronger in this area, and I've got to study this area, and I've got to study that area, and I've got to be better in this. <clears throat> you're building armor, but it, it's something you're doing. And your strength becomes your weakness because you think, bless God, healing, I know healing. Ooh, I know healing. Devil ain't going to make me sick. And we don't realize that, okay, maybe he doesn't. Maybe you live well. But the rest of your life is going to pot. Why? Because you spend all your time studying it. You see what I'm saying? You study, and, and you're, you're, you're putting all your hope into your studies. When our hope should be in him. And when your hope is in him, he encompasses everything. And all of a sudden now, your healing, your salvation, your deliverance, it's all there. And whatever you need, he's there. You learn to become one with him, not one <clears throat> with all this added stuff to where you, after a while, you look at yourself and you can't even recognize yourself. And we, <clears throat> in the church, instead of, when people come in, instead of thinking, all right, we need to add this and we need to add that, <clears throat> I, I, I thank God for some of my, my, my understanding that came in a roundabout way. But true freedom is not always adding more it is stripping away to the essentials. You see, adding, if you, this is the difference between Christianity and religion. See, religion is always adding more, more rules. Do this. If I don't do this, if I live this way, I'm okay. If I, don't, if I mess up, I'm not okay. And if I, if I stop doing this, I'm good. And if I do that again, I'm bad. You see, that's religion. Christianity just says, die. Die. Become one with him. And it's, no, it's stripping everything else away. It's not how many verses you know. It's not what you know, translation you read from. It's not, it's, it's not even a translation at all. It's what's here. You know, <clears throat> who cares how many Greek words you can quote if you won't reach out to touch somebody that's holding a sign on a street corner? They don't care about your Greek, Right? They want to see your, you know, your presidents, right? <laughs> we were, um, I'm saying all that because I just don't want to get religious. You know, I don't want to get locked into some system. I, I, 
I, I see Christianity, you know, as, as you all do, as a family, as a relationship, as a, you know, an organism, not an organization. And we have organizations that hopefully help us spread the message and all that stuff. But we, we've got to remember the organization is never the organism. Amen? You know, I mean, because even, even with me, my, with my military mindset and all that kind of stuff, <clears throat> I, I'm heading down that road more than ever before. But at the same time, I'm asking God more than ever before. Are you sure? Is this right? You want to back off? I'll back off. I don't mind. You know, I can, I can scrap all of it. Because I'm telling you, I can lay stuff down that quick. Because the only thing that counts is his nod. That's it. Amen? Nothing else. <clears throat> I have lost all, um, maybe I can't say all, I mean, you'd have to judge all, but I was saying, I have lost any hesitation based on what people will think about the moves or changes I make. If I make a change, it's because I truly believe that making that change will help me do what I'm supposed to do better. And, you know, the, the, the military mindset, military structure, that's all wonderful. But if I ever thought it was getting in the way, and believe me, like I said, I ask God all the time, constantly. You know, you tell me. You know, and it's like every step, is this good? Is this good? If it's not, I'll back off. Because if it, if it hinders, I'll trash it. You know, and make no apologies other than the fact, you know, okay, sorry if it, you know, came unexpected or whatever. There is nothing, there's no system, no structure, no nothing that I care about other than let's just do this and get the most people help. And let's do it the most efficient way. And I'm telling you, the church is like these old-fashioned knights. You know, they wrote... You know, you always see these knights in the movies, you know, with the, all the armor and the, the lances, and they got the, I mean, the ever, so much stuff. And you think, even the horses had it on them. And they're right. Can you imagine? And we, I don't know if our horses today could, could do it. I mean, they had to be some stout horses to carry off that weight. And then you look at them getting on and off the horse. They had to have that squire help them. And they're right. They had to throw down a, a little thing for him to step off on because he couldn't even get it. Actually, what they did for knights, they actually had a, a crane that they would ride up under that they would hook onto the armor. That most of the armor had even little things on them that they would actually hook onto and raise them up and walk the horse out and then lower them. Now, when you can't even get off your own horse, okay, or on your own horse, you have too much baggage. Isn't that right? And that's, but that's the church today. The church, we're trying to create this army of knights and I'm not talking about the sh you know code of chivalry and all that that's all wonderful that needs to come back but we we create this army of knights that has this loud heavy clanking armor and and the funny thing is today the armor they're using it doesn't work you know on the battlefield we would love to face men walking at us in armor like that especially with the weapons we have today and <laughs> they right they any one of their armors, any bullet, we a twenty-two would probably go through most of it, right? But yet, but the, what is the church doing? We're still producing knights in armor, you know, lift us up and put us on our horse, and we have to have the kid over here with a rope doing it. Come on, the, the knight is only as good as the kid with the rope, <laughs> right? And if the, ki if the kid with the rope says, <laughs> forget it, I'm not helping you, then guess what? The knight can't even get on his horse. Right? And he sure can't get up there and then get his armor and try to put it on up there. Right? Is this making sense to you? The, the church doesn't need to produce knights in armor. You know, we need to produce, like what we have, Navy SEALs and Special Forces and Rangers. That mentality. But the church isn't geared for that. Why? Because that mentality teaches people how to fight and how to think for themselves. And that's the one thing that the church today doesn't want anybody to do is think for themselves. You know, we have to have group conformity and you cannot think for yourself and you have to have somebody at the head telling you what to think, how to think, when to think it. And yet if you do that, then that's only, you're only going to be as good as that leader. And that means that all of the enemy's attentions will be geared toward that leader. And if he takes him out, you're going to be running around 
as we used to say, like a chicken with his head cut off. And you're not going to get anything done. So we have to create a many-headed team. That's, and that's what the church has to be. And I, you've heard this before, and I know this isn't news to you, but there is a reason why God is pushing you know, and it, it would, and it's not our staff meeting, all right? <laughs> a lot of times it is, but it's not, okay? Even though we talked about this during the staff meeting, it's not that. <clears throat> this is not what Jesus died for. You know, Jesus did not die so we can have the right to gather up together and talk about someday or talk about a system of do's and don'ts. He died and gave us his spirit. Be, think about this. He had to die to give us his spirit. He could not leave his spirit and his spirit dwell within us if he hadn't died. He had to die. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have. He, you understand, he could have died and then came back and lived on the earth as a resurrected man and been phenomenal. I mean, who wouldn't have believed? He could have went to the temple and said, there you go, you know, look at this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, look at there, you see? He could have done all that stuff. And people said, isn't that the guy, you know, that was crucified, that was, you know, done all these things? And they would have said, yeah, that's him. Wasn't he dead? Yeah, he was dead, but I'm alive. See, he could have done all that, but he left so that he could send his spirit back so that he would inhabit all of us so that we could be like him, be sons and daughters of God, not like the disciples, like him. And not so that we could all, as these sons who have this, <coughs> this treasure in earth and vessels, that we can gather up and talk about our treasure and talk about how good it is to have this treasure and talk about how you know, how, well, my treasure is, you know, a little more treasurable than your treasure. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm in a, you know, I, I've been longer with the Lord, so my treasure is better. It, it, that's not why we're here. We, we are here, and over the next, uh, as I start teaching some more of the, even the, some of the life team and some of the SEAL training stuff that we're doing, I'm going to do my best to redefine mission. Because we think of mission as... <clears throat> we think of missions and missionaries, put it that way, as people who go to foreign lands and live a certain way and do certain things when we don't realize that every one of us here has a mission. But how many of us are going to go live in foreign countries? Some may, some may not. So what is true mission? Mission, especially in military terms, means a clear objective with a clear end so you'll know what's going on, when you've accomplished it, how to get out of it, and you have everything lined out to go in, get the job done, and get out. That's a mission. Now, Jesus gave us a mission. And every Monday will be a mission for you. Tuesday will be a mission for you. See, if you look at them um, during World War, uh, well, actually during the Gulf War, as a matter of fact, when you start noticing how they terminolo the terminology they use for their flights, they, they use terms like... Um, because they had airplanes, obviously, they go out, fighters, bombers, all that kind of stuff that goes out. But they may have um, 500 planes. But they'll say, well, we flew 1,270 sorties. Well, that means how many times a plane, you know, planes as a whole went out and came back and went back out and went, went on missions, right? So if you have 500 planes and you have 1,270 sorties, then obviously several planes had more than one mission, more than one flight. Each sortie is a mission. They don't just go out and fly around and say, oh, I'll drop them over there this time. I'll drop some bombs. No, each one has a clear cut. You're going here when you see this, when you hear this, when it's there. You drop this bomb on that place. And if you don't get to that place, you don't have a clear shot, you don't drop your bomb. It's clear cut, mission. We, as Christians, have to develop a mission attitude. Not a, I hope I can make it till Sunday and gather back up because I really love my church family and really love the fellowship and, man, we have a good time. We're, you know, we're going to go out to eat before or after. Some, not that. 
this, this, is, this is where we come back together and say, okay, listen, this, this should be our, our debriefing from last week's missions and our briefing for next week. And don't be surprised if it doesn't start going that way because I could care less about this. Jesus didn't die for this, so I'm not going to live for it. Right? Simple as that. But if I can get across the idea of mission that tomorrow when you go out that military intelligence of the armies of heaven has determined with a good probability that you are going to encounter enemy forces tomorrow here's what you need to know to beat them right and you are going your mission tomorrow and the next five days six days till we meet again is to while you go out and encounter search and destroy these enemy forces the reason you're see the reason you're encountering these enemy forces is twofold one is to destroy the works of the enemy right no matter where you see them you destroy them you don't have to have a uh, it's called um, <clears throat> targets of opportunity in other words it wasn't planned they didn't know it but guess what you happen across the same path so you take a shot simple as that but your job is to rescue POWs. Now, you are going to find POWs tomorrow. You're going to come across people who are prisoners of war. Now, my job is to make sure that you are trained and equipped to meet the need that those POWs have. Not just find them, but when you find them, rescue them. Find out what's wrong with them. You have to be <clears throat> adept as a medic. To, if they have a problem with them, you got to be able to help get them well enough to get back home. If their problem is something else, you have to be able to answer their questions to be able to get them to accept Christ. <clears throat> there are all of these different aspects. See, this stuff gets real simple if you really get down to it. I mean, super simple, unless you add in religion. When you add in religion, because let me tell you, where religion comes in is people's personalities. That's where it comes in. Because when you start dealing with when you start dealing with religion, you will deal with personalities. And so, that's why, again, that's why I'm leaning so strong toward the military attitude and toward the military mindset because there's not a person in this room that I can't honestly say that I love. I would do anything I can for anybody here. At the same time, I don't give a flip about your personality. I'm just being honest. I don't care. You know, I hope you got a good one. You know, and I hope you don't get flipped about mine because mine ain't always good, right? But I know this. We are not called together to like each other. We're called together to get a job done. And it really doesn't matter whether you like me or don't like me. or You know, I hope you do, but and I'm not trying to make you not like me, okay? It may seem like that sometimes, but I'm really not. But the point is, we have a job to do. The point is, whether we get along or not, for whatever reason, God has seen fit that we should cross paths, and in that crossing of paths, iron is going to sharpen iron. And whether our paths are long-term or short-term, the bottom line is, there's a reason that God thought that you needed to meet me and I needed to meet you. And in that, I guarantee you, the bottom line is not so we can like each other. The bottom line is because you got something I need that'll make me more effective in reaching the world, and I got something you need that'll make you more effective in reaching the world. But if we don't reach the world, then if we all do is just connect with each other, we are wasting our time and God's effort of putting us together. Because this stuff, this only counts if we can translate this to out there. What we do in here, now, worshiping God, of course that counts. I'm not saying it doesn't. But what I'm trying to emphasize is that do we want to go to heaven empty-handed? Or do we want to go to heaven with trophies of bodies that have been healed and lives that have been changed, souls that have been saved? I mean, that's the greatest glory we can bring our King. Amen? Our good works that will shine before men that they will glorify our Heavenly Father. Amen? All right, let's stand up.
Did you get anything out of this tonight? All right. Well, I did, so. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, Lord, we love you. And Lord, we especially love you because we know that you know us better than anybody else. And you still love us. And Father, we know that your love, <clears throat> Lord, it is beyond understanding. It is beyond words. And Father, we could stand here, we could sing for hours, we could worship, we could pray, we could say, we could do praise, and we could magnify your name, which is all good. And we can say all kinds of good things about how we love you and what we want to do for you and, and all these things, Lord. But if we don't help other people to know you, then everything we do here is absolutely vain. Lord, your son told us that because of our traditions that we can actually cause people to worship you in vain. Father, you said in the Old Testament that there were prophets that prophesied out of the vanities of their own mind. God, we're here. We've called ourselves a church, a local body of your, of your son, a local body of the body of Christ. But God, we do not want to hold traditions of men to be more important than your word or more important than the very mercies of God. We don't want our traditions or our ways or, or our, what we do here as a group to be anything other than sharpening ourselves to become closer to you, closer to this world, to show them so that they can see our good works and that we can shine before men as sons of God, holding forth your word of life. Now, Father, to truly be examples and to, be, and to shine, to truly hold forth your word, Lord, we should be, as you said in your word, we should be first partakers of the benefits that we want to take to others. So, Father, because of that, right now, I say thank you for healing, for the very life that you've poured into us. Lord, that, that we can take, at, at any moment, we can choose to take your word and read it and believe it and renew our minds to it and live according to it. That we don't, Lord, have to wait. But we can choose to pick this word up and obey it. And Father, we thank you that your spirit is within us, that it is you that wills and helps us to do your will. And Lord, that we are one with you. But Lord, you said that the world won't know that we're one with you until we can show love for one another. And Father, we know we are to love you, to love our neighbor as ourself. But Father, help us to show the world that your love lives within us. So Father, we choose right now to lay down that lower life. We choose to lay down that part of us that would still rise up in defense of ourself. And Lord, we bow our knee to you we surrender to you. And Lord, we, are, we make ourselves vulnerable and we recognize our weakness. And we say that with your spirit abiding within us, we are strong. Not in ourselves, but in the fact that your spirit lives within us. Father, we thank you. I thank you right now that healing is in your body. Healing right now. Every sickness, every disease, every, like I just said, every dis-ease right now in Jesus' name must 
bow its knee to the name of Jesus and it will leave every body on this, in this room. In Jesus' name, I commend every cell, tissue, organ, limb, body, right now that has been affected in any form of sickness, disease, illness, anything, right now, I command it to respond to the voice of the Word of God. I command there to be healing, head to toe. And I say in Jesus' name, the life of God prevail in Jesus' name. That there will be peace and the joy right now that is in Christ Jesus would be with us all. Right now, that we would become both in the eyes of of you, Lord, and in the eyes of the world, that we would become the very image of your Son. To walk like Him, talk like Him, act like Him. And Lord, let Him be our example. Lord, let us speak His words. Not, <clears throat> Lord, <clears throat> that there will be absolute, tonight, growth. In all of us, in our spirits, in our minds, there will be growth. 